All right, folks, here we are. Now, we're at the shop, and we need to get that manifold off that you saw us build in the beginning of this video. Set up right now. Is the fact that So here we go. This, we're gonna have to make an exhaust for. So, to round all this inside stuff off, we're gonna use what uh, I call the Manifold Maker 9000. This was borrowed to me by Gavin. It's a sweet little thing. Apparently it got used to make the last manifold. Now this is the chunk of exhaust we're gonna be using. As you can see here, I have in my hands some super clean, and this thing is full of diesel oil that has been caked inside of it thanks to the old turbo having terrible seals. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this thing with super clean. You can see it working. Sorry about that. Maybe you're asking yourself, why are you putting water into the exhaust? It's not gonna matter much because it's gonna dry out pretty quick out here. Start well, so, put this bad boy on. We're gonna pick number 16. Yeah, we'll see. That much wire speed. We're just gonna kinda go for it. Outside is now fully welded. Now that is beautiful. Okay, so oiling. This is the second biggest thing when it comes to what we're doing today because intake is going to be a fun one because it means we'll finally get boost. However, first we'll deal with how I oiled this. So there's five ports, five oil ports on this turbo and this is the gist of it as I can see it. This front one right here that I've blocked off with this custom built block off plate is the drain. Up here is just another recirculation port. This is how you can, I guess, check something. This is not a direct passage to the bearing. This one, however, right back here, if you can see this one, this is a biggie. This is the high pressure oil line this one is right on top of the bearing you can see the bearing through this one and the bottom one is the low pressure oil line and that one you can also see where the circulation is it goes from here it goes from the high pressure circulates to the low around this whole thing now how did i oil it well all i did was put this block off plate on find this came with the turbo so if you're buying a ko3 turbo for an audi 1.8 liter engine this comes with it However, these two back ones normally plug into oil lines. Well, there's no oil lines. How do I get oil to this thing? Well, all I do is I find something, a plug or a bolt with the same thread, put Teflon on it, fill the whole thing full of high viscosity oil. So 15 weight diesel oil. I leave it open, I circulate it using an air compressor, put into the turbine, I circulate the oil down until it reaches the drain and fills all the way up and recirculates up into the low, low pressure area. Once it's fully circulated and cannot go anywhere, then I know the bearing is covered in oil. And that means that the bearing will constantly be lubricated. That's all you're looking for in a turbo is the bearing to be lubricated. If you don't circulate it first, it won't be full enough to circulate around, to I'm saying circulate a lot. It won't be full enough to go around the bearing and to lubricate it. Uh, I've answered people's questions before on this in the comment section, but I figured I'd do it in video form because not everybody comments. So, there you go.
All right, the thing you saw me fabricating was, of course, the intake flange. Oh, yes. Now, I'm gonna weld a one and a half inch outer diameter tube to the outside of that, and then we're gonna plug this right on there and have boost, proper boost, through a blow-through carburetor setup for the first time on this mower. That is insane to me. So, let's cut. All right, folks, piece of tubing. We're gonna do Get to cutting. We're gonna hand cut this because the bandsaw down there decided to give up. All right, folks, I'm sure you've got the burning question. How long will this take? So, start the counter now. That's time, folks. That's right, folks. We're gonna have boost. Well, I'm gonna wait on this to cool down, then I'm gonna bolt it all up completely. We'll run this thing with boost. Can't believe I'm saying that. All right, folks. There are going to have to be some things to iron out. Boosted mower, the turbo mower, finally has boost and it starts right up. So I'm going to put the air cleaner on and see if that solves the air fuel mixture issue. <laughs> these full but when it spools up the carburetor catches up with itself because on startup it's super rich and then the carb catches up with itself can't get enough fuel from the fuel tank and then starves itself but you did hear it run and you heard it here folks the turbo mower is back and I do thank you guys for watching this two-part build-up. It was really fun for me and I hope you guys are liking the return to this. When this week is over or when the next couple of weeks are over we are resuming farming content so I hope you guys are ready for that. I know I am. It is gonna be a ton of fun and uh, yeah when we get back into farming content this will be less seen but it will be still seen and you'll see it here next time on Northwest Exploration. Super clean polishing tips. So we're in front of this rusty tailpipe and I'm gonna show you a super clean polishing tip. Now, normally I don't recommend to do this, but I am gonna to recommend to do this. And I'm gonna show you why this works for polishing. There's dirt inside this rust. And you wanna get rid of it to polish a little better. Grab a wire wheel. Polishing, just get up there.
And already, you can see that's looking a ton cleaner. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and show you what it looks like. And obviously, that looks a ton better. So if I were to do this whole system, it would look super nice. But I'm gonna move on to some other super clean polishing stuff. So do you have any dirty welds or rusty welds? Apply a little bit of this on the dirt and then break out of the wire wheel. Boom. 